Hi, my name is Bonzi Ansa and I'm your guest presenter for today. Seated next to me is a young man who exemplifies the Akan adage, which says, Ephibia mensawun. He's referred to himself as, it says here, the Chaliwote wearing, wearing Roma, the Waki, what's that? Wache in the leaf eater, the coconut and mango tree climber, the socks ball in the gutter go and finder, amongst many things. But I know him as the teenage prodigy, piano player, a classical music lover, and a dad be posing as a wannabe hardcore rapper. <laughs> and many strange things here. Anyway, man, so welcome to the diaries. Thank you, thank you, Bonzi. Um, I went to school with a guy called Bonzi, a very useless guy. But really? I'm sure His you are name different. Is Bonzi as well? Thank you. That's interesting information and we'll talk more about it after the show. So, it's well documented that your mom played a huge role in your learning to play the piano. Tell me, what's your fondest memory you have in regards to her attempt to turn you into the next Beethoven? Well, um, I told my mom after, you know, my mom's father was a pianist and my, my dad's father was also a pianist. And that's not what made me want to become a piano player. I just went to my friend's house. They had a nice piano, a Roland piano. This is the 80s. <laughs> And I wanted yeah, I a piano, those. and my mom took it a bit too seriously. And so now, we got a Casio nice piano, and then a piano teacher who was coming five days a week, and five then I play at church on Sunday. Week. So it was too much for me. And then I started dodging my piano lessons. So I'll be on the park, and then I'll see my mom coming with a cane, looking for me on the park. And my mom, the way she is, she raised three boys. So she would beat me on the park right then and there. Before when I come home, she would show the piano teacher that she has really trained me. So she would beat me there before I played the piano. So, but, I mean, I really hated playing the piano. I hated it. I really did. Until wow. I discovered rap music. Your mom was hardcore. So, can I ask, have things such as your dad's exploits with Osibisa, your uncle owning a TV station and producing groundbreaking movies, and your cousin starring in Hollywood blockbusters affected your life to succeed in show business? Um, my successful family members have only influenced me by giving me pressure to be as great as them, but nothing like, you know, in no handouts, handouts or anything of that sort. You know what I mean? My family is very critical right. of the arts. Right. The only benefit is that they appreciate the arts. Right. So I never got any pressure to be a doctor or a nurse or a lawyer. If I wanted to do the arts or be an artist, it's fine. But the pressure is crazy because, you know, my family members have done so well. Let me ask you, if you had to take one female Ghanaian celebrity on a romantic weekend getaway, who would you pick? Media may pick chip side, pan. So maybe I know maybe somebody has said this before, but like maybe I'll take Raquel. Why? Because already I've seen that thing, so we can move on to the mm. next thing. I never thought of it like that. You really are chip side, aren't Man, you? Manuel. So fast, fast. Tell me, what's the worst way in which you've ever broken up with someone? I mean, some men have done some really nasty things. What's your story? It's actually the other way around. A girl once told me that I used to love her. I was, I was young, I was like 14. And she left me and she went to America of Bronx. And then she called me one day and said to me, listen, I'm in America, you are in Ghana. I don't know if you ever go to America in your life, so please, let's just stop here No. Oh, as soon as she said it, this is no lie. As soon as she said it, there was light off. <laughs> Now, we're gonna move to the most, my favorite part of the show, which is the truth and dare segment. No, no, no. You heard me right. Truth and dare. I like it. So you don't have an option. You just have to answer the question. Okay, so we'll start off with the truth, where you have to be honest, as honest as possible, okay? I'll right. try. Half cool or dark skinned? Dark skin. Tall or short? Tall. 
but you're pretty short so anyway slim or chubby mm, chubby why, why do skinny guys always like chubby girls <coughs> so describe a prank you played on someone it should be good a prank I played on someone my whole life has been pranks yeah um, I can't off the top what pranks too many too many it'll come to me later if you could be a superhero for one day who would you be I would be Captain Kinky he would turn himself into a ball of kinky slap you in the face say something in ga and then eat fried fish Okay, we're gonna move on to the dares because you obviously seem not to be really doing very well with the truths. Um, I dare you to bark like a dog. Whoa, whoa. Sing your favorite song in a high-pitched voice. <clears throat> Something like that. Right, so moving on to the next segment, and uh, it's called the first impression. And with this one, I say a word, and you say the first thing that comes to mind. Old. <laughs> Reggie Rockstone. <laughs> <laughs> Wanna be D Black. Very good. Beautiful. D Black sister. She's cute, isn't she? Soft. D Black. <laughs> Very good. Tight. Anybody who wants rap with D Black. <laughs> A good one. Fake. D Black. Funny. D Black's rap career. Banana. Deborah Vanessa. Owusu Bonsu. Right, guys. Your host has been Bonzi Ansa, and I've been speaking to Mensa. It's an okay, kind of normal, mediocre kind of guy. A little disappointed the interview but it's been great having you here i like your hair it looks very good you know if you take better care of it it might you know and um it's good good having you here thank you thank you guys and have a good week and i'll see you again soon bye yeah, yeah, yeah.